Hello everyone, it's Helen from Journaling Planet and today I'd like you to take a look at all this free craft paper I've collected. What's that? It, these are just receipts. They're worthless. Uh, no, no, that's, that's not correct. And I'm going to show you how to use them or how I use them on a master board. I wanted to show you something else after I made the um, tickets with the receipts, which I will link to the video where I did that below. I truly believe in using up the paper you have. And uh, to that end, I'm just going to start my master board by just taking some blank uh, sheets of notebook paper. It can be anything at all. It could be ones that you've written on. Um, we're just use, looking for anything that we can use as a, a substrate, as they call it. So uh, something to kind of collage onto. Um, oh, my auntie bought me this book. It's my favourite bridge. Yes, I have a favourite bridge. Uh, it's nothing geeky or sad about that. Uh, it's a bridge that stands not too far from where we live. And once upon a time, I wrote a book about its history. That's how much I like it. Right. Uh, enough of my personal life. Let's get on with the master boarding. That's why you're here. You don't need to hear about the bridges in my local area. Although <laughs> maybe that is of interest to some of you. I don't know. I don't know how many of you share my... Um, Slightly geeky love of architecture and uh, those kind of things. You can just keep gluing the pieces of paper together until uh, you're at a size that you feel like, yeah, that's a decent size master board. Here's the very complicated thing that we do. Uh, we take a receipt, any old receipt, and maybe if it's a bit long, We'll tear it up as well. And we'll do exactly what we would do with any other piece of collage paper that we were going to collage down. Um, we will, well, first of all, because I've glued this master board together, I'm going for the um, bits where there's a seam between the papers and just trying to reinforce that. You're getting the gist. I'm going to speed up the next bit of this video and I'm going to use some different colours, use some different fonts and I'm just going to go in any old direction and fill the whole sheet of paper pretty much as quickly as I can. Typically, I am very much at the end of my glue stick, um, but perhaps you're looking at this and are quite surprised by the variation of fonts and colours and motifs and icons and uh, logos. And this isn't even really a particularly varied um, master board, but you, perhaps you can already see how when you chop this up, it would make for quite an interesting um motif on the background. Now the other thing that you can do when you do this project um, other than use up your receipts, so um, hang on I've got two ideas let me let me just explain both of them. So the first one is I've just chosen random receipts and as I'm gluing them down in some cases it's reminding me of places that I've been and things that I've done because I've maybe had a meal or I've bought something or we've been to a particular shop that's only a particular place. Um, so if you wanted to do this a little bit more um, strategically, you could, when you go away on, say, holiday or vacation, whatever you may call it, um, you could collect all the receipts from that one trip, 
make a master board and then cut it up into pieces and make ephemera for your travel journal. I think that would work really beautifully. This is just random, okay? This is just an absolute mishmash, everything from um, the post office to the pharmacy to the cinema, just things that, you know, I've had to spend, receipts I've had to get. In this instance, I'd already stamped at the top of this in the video about making tickets um and so the other thing you can do is you can um so the first thing is you can collect specific numbers or like kinds of receipts from a particular trip or maybe from a particular say you collect all your cinema receipts or whatever like that you can um put them into a particular kind of category and make a um, ephemera for a very specific journal. Um, also, I've made this thin enough um, that I could actually use this as a signature because it's only on paper, not card. So that's another thing you can do. So I guess I have um, three ideas, <laughs> not two. So you could use it as signature. And then the third thing was that you could do what I did here, which is stamp on here on your receipts um, as you're working. So maybe you clean your paintbrush off on it. Maybe you um, stamp to use up the ink. Um, whatever it is, you could use receipts as kind of a way of cleaning your workspace. And then they'd have marks on them. So it'd be like a mark making activity as well. So there's all that to consider. This is going to be slightly annoying when I cut this up because anything with a face, with a master board, is an absolute nuisance. I can tell you from past experience. I once stuck a cat sticker down on a master board and no matter which way I chopped it, the cat was going to get like chopped in half. <laughs> which is just not what you want. Uh, you really don't want a cat severed in half. So, um, and you don't want that with a face either. So it's going to be a nuisance. I know when I cut it up, but you know, it was there. I used it, whatever. It's fine. Right. We're now at the bit where I'm going to zoom out because I'm going to do some mark making. So you're going to see, um, a little bit more mess. Sorry about that. So, um, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a couple of different inks, um, to do some stamping. When it comes to this portion of the project, you can use whatever is in your stash to decorate your master board. Um, I've done videos on, um, you know, using lipstick instead of um, like artist paint. Um, you can use food coloring. You can use tea. You can use anything you've got in your cupboard that makes a mark. You can, if you are using just normal mark making tools instead of... Um, ink stamps which is what I'm going to use um, very easy to cut yourself a simple stencil I could even use a receipt to do it why not okay I'm just going to um, fold it in half a little bit and in half again into like a quarter and then I'm just going to cut some shapes out of it any which way just gonna whatever just gonna cut some weird shapes out of it and then I'm going to open that up oh. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that <laughs> I just made like a accidentally made like a four-leaved flower there all right I'm going to use ink stamps but just for demonstration purposes I could do that with a receipt all right get to this part uh, get my blue out uh, or my food coloring whatever I'm using whatever I'm using, tea, doesn't matter, and just dab over the stencil, stencil the inverted commas, um, to make some marks and interesting patterns on my master board. Who needs a stencil? Who needs a stencil that is cut out of plastic when I've got a receipt? You could do something way better than that. That was just a two second cut. All right, but you get the gist. You could lay that stencil down in different colors and look at how cool this is. The pattern you've got around the stencil already and that's just the blue. I haven't even come in with the maroon yet. Let's go in with the maroon. Okay, I'm getting totally sidetracked, so what? I don't need to buy a stencil. This isn't gonna last forever, obviously, but I could just glue this down on a snippet. I could glue it down on this masterboard if I wanted to. And I will use it on a snippet roll. 
because it's got some awesome color on that now. So what I'm going to do is I think with the ink stamp, I'm, uh, the, sorry, the text stamp, I'm going to use black and I'm going to get that um, inked up. And it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly inked up, that's just going to add to the charm. Just going to go for one of these frames. I'm going to just get my acrylic block. Get the other stamps that I was using off it. Actually, you know what I can do with this acrylic block? They're very useful. Is I can actually mount maybe th two or three of these frames at once and just stamp around with that. Okay, so we'll do that. Uh, let's do the same that we did with the frames and I'll put a few of these postage mark stamps on the block and just stamp all at once. Uh, I've got quite a lot of ink on my sponge so if there's any bits that I don't like as well or that I don't want to be as prominent, maybe I don't want the, the word window cleaned to be as prominent, I could just come in with the spare ink uh, on my sponge and just kind of dab over. Maybe I don't want the word cancer research to be so prominent, for example. I'll just dab over that, you know. To add to the randomness, I'm going to get my gold ink and I'm gold ink, gold paint. <laughs> if only I knew what I was using at any given time, that would be more professional. And I'm going to start, it's called liquid metal. I'm going to start just um, spattering. Now what I can't do um, is put washi down whilst this uh, paint is drying. So I'm just going to let that dry and then I'll come back. I'll do some finishing touches and maybe we'll we'll chop it up and I'll just show you one piece of ephemera that you could make with it. Okay, what always astounds me about this process is when, when everything's dry, it has a completely different look to it. And I'm really pleased with how this has dried. The pieces of washi that I'm putting down, I suppose I'm largely looking for um, corners that maybe aren't glued down as well as they could be but I'm also using quite neutral colours uh, or neutral designs so that I can use it in pretty much any um, project that I want. I'm not sure how much from a distance you can tell what I've done there, but it's just papering over a few of the cracks. I still think that you might look at this and think, what's a mess? But um, I'm at the point now where I want to chop it into bits and pieces and um, have a go at making some ephemera so you can see what it looks like when you chop it down, any additional things you might do to it. This is perfectly fine to work with as a masterboard as is. Okay. Some really interesting pieces of masterboard, all different kind of colours, fonts, motifs. Uh, the mark making is slightly different on each piece, so it's all got its slight, you know, unique look. I've got my stamp loaded up and I'm, I'm thinking about doing it on the back of a receipt or on the front of a receipt. I don't know which is going to work best, so I think I'm just going to try both and then cut around them and see which one I like best. I'll still have like a spare, um, or oh, actually I do have some brown paper as well, so we'll just we'll put that in reserve. I'll do three impressions and we'll just see which one we like best. Okay, mm, having cut three of them out, I'm 
greedily tempted to use all three, um, but that probably is a bit much. I don't know. Do I care? Do I care if it's a bit much? You know what it reminds me of is like, you know, the three blonde women in Beauty and the Beast in Disney <laughs> who uh, love Gaston. It kind of reminds me a little bit of that just because there are three of them and they're identical looking. <laughs> that's kind of cracking me up. Um, no, I mean, let's not be silly. I'm going to choose one and I'm going to put like, a little label or something else on there. Um, I'm gonna. Am I gonna do it with the green? I do. You know what? I think the green because I like the fact that green and green and pink. There's a lot, quite a lot of pink in the background. Uh, do um, what's the word? They kind of clash. Contrast. Contrast is the right word. Okay, I've done this before where I have felt like there was too much space on a tag um, for just three things and because the tag is just a bit big. So I, I do find under those circumstances that three postage stamps down one side or another and two other things, so keeping it an uneven number, just somehow works really well. So before I get sticking those down, what I need to do is chop the corners of this to make it into a tag. Okay, I am going to sew around this in a moment as well because I have a sewing machine, but I have said before that if you don't have a sewing machine, um, drawing small black lines around the edge of your tag has a very similar effect. It just creates a little border and to be honest, is a lot less effort. I'm just going to put something at the top and what I think I'm going to do is actually use an off cut from the master board. Um, so it's still receipts <laughs> that I'm using. Um, yeah, because I didn't cut it straight in some places that are a few off cuts, which I love using as well. Off cuts to master boards are one of my favorite things to use to top a tag or, um, you know, for other kind of collage projects. Okay. Well, the background is receipt. This was stamped on the back of a receipt. The topper is a receipt. And the only other things that I've used are fused postage stamps and some brown paper and an ink stamp. So, I don't think that's bad going. Yes, I did sew around the edge, but as I said, that is completely optional. That is not something that you have to do. The only thing I'm slightly wondering is if I should um, ink in a slightly darker colour um, to sort of be sympathetic with the colour of the um, thread. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is going to make any difference whatsoever, but I'm just going to go around quickly um, whilst I'm just closing up the video. Thank you so much for watching this far and for um, engaging in the different things that I make. I really, really appreciate all the comments, all of the likes, all of the subscribes, all of the emails <laughs> for those of you who are on my mailing list and uh, and write to me. I oh yes, I do th I do think that just gives it a bit more of a um, a defined edge. Yeah, um, I do think that it is worth looking again at the paper that comes into your life even if it seems completely and utterly like disposable uh, a lot of the time it actually makes a difference um, you know to your project if you use something that not everyone else is using 
Um, and that includes things that people haven't thought to use in their junk journals, like like receipts. Obviously, there will be other tutorials out there, I, I'm sure, that use receipts, but you just don't see it very often. So it does make your piece of work just stand out a little bit different um, to the others. And it's a good feeling to use something that would have otherwise um, ended up in the recycling. Certainly it is for me anyway. <laughs> okay, I think I've got enough ink on there. Uh, drop me a comment below and let me know what you think of this method. Let me know what you think about using receipts. If you use them, please share how you use them, what you do with them, how you alter them, or if you just use them as is. I'd be really interested to know and I'm sure everyone else would be too. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.